The federal government says it will no longer tolerate the incessant harassment of its citizens in Ghana and the progressive acts of hostility towards the country by Ghanaian authorities. In a statement issued on Friday in Abuja, the government said it was urgently considering a number of options aimed at ameliorating the situation. The statement signed by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said the government had been documenting the, uh, the act of hostility towards its people and authorities. The minister listed such hostilities to include the seizure of the Nigerian mission's property located non at number 10, Barnes Road, Accra, which the Nigerian government had used as diplomatic premises for almost 50 years. He said the government considered the action as a serious breach of the Vienna Convention. The minister added that the demolition of the Nigerian mission's property located at number 10, uh, at number 19 and 21 Julius Nyerere Street, East Ridge, Accra, was another serious breach of the Vienna Convention, among others. Uh, we are now being joined by Kwame Jantua, uh, Chairman, Political Affairs Committee, uh, Convention People's Party, um, all the way from Ghana. And of course, uh, from Abuja, we have uh, Mr. Paul Ejime, an international affairs expert. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you very much, Alam. Um, good morning. I'm going to kick off with Mr. Kwame. I, wa I want to know, do you agree with the Nigerian Minister of mm -hmm. Information, or there is, is there some form of distortion? Sorry, unfortunately, there's an echo, so I can't hear you. Can you hear me clearly now? Can you properly to go up? All right, I, I, well, I'm going to try again. I'm asking if you agree with the Nigerian Minister of Information. Do I agree with the, the Nigerian Minister of Information? Yeah. Concerning? Um, concerning, you know, the um, issues Nigerians are facing in Ghana, of course, the seeming diplomatic role that might be creeping in here. May I um, indicate that... Um, I'm not sure whether the Nigerian side has had some detailed communication with the Ghanaian government. Um, because um, some of the notices we put out, especially on the press release, quite a few things have been sorted out. For instance, the residency issue has been sorted out at the present moment. And when you look at the actual challenges going on, it's not every business in Nigeria that is going through this. This particular issue has got to do with a particular clause in the GIPC law. And that clause indicates that this type of retailing is um, preserved Ghanaian alone now. The law states that if anybody wants to do this kind of business, any foreigner or foreign company wants to do this kind of business, the fee is a million dollars. And, you know, that fee has been put there to stop people from going into it. And really, we have Nigerian businesses here that are doing very well, that have no challenges with government. Okay. It's those who don't want to abide by the laws, and it's not only Nigerians, we have other nationalities who are also not wanting to abide by the law, and government trying to enforce the law. I, I want to quickly, just before you go on, I, I want um, you to help clarify exactly what businesses um, are being charged a million dollars. Sorry, sorry, I can't hear you properly. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, if you can talk slowly, please. All right. Um, I want to know exactly what businesses uh, that are charged a million dollars uh, to run in Ghana. What type of businesses? Well, that, that particular um, figure there, the million dollars, is there because it's acting as a deterrent so that these businesses can be reserved for Ghanaians. And it's got to do with retailing in the market, barber shops, hairdressing, uh, taxis, you know, these type of um, businesses. It's not the big businesses like the Zenith Banks and, you know, big businesses in uh, 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 Ghana that Nigerians want to go into. I mean, there is um, 
your 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 uh, company here. I, I forget the name, but it, it, it's it's already yeah. here. Yeah. What number of businesses we have Nigerian companies in the oil industry here? They are not paying a million dollars. So that particular figure is preserved. The retailing sector that is left for them. And even though um, barbers and uh, taxis are in it, you get Nigerians doing barbers. My barber is a Nigerian. And this is what government is trying to enforce the law. And so I believe that there has to be some good um, uh, communication between Nigeria and Ghana. Because the way it is, it is, it is making it look in Nigeria it is totally different from the way we see it here. All right. Um, please hold on. I want to speak now to Paul and uh, Mr. Paul Ejime. Um, um Of course, um, Mr. Kwame has already stated he doesn't think that there has been proper communication between the, the two countries. Um, you relate regularly with the ECOWAS mission. Do you think the allegations leveled by the uh, Minister of Information are valid? Yes, I think, yes, I can hear you. I think um, that uh, statement um, is overdue. If I'm not just a statement, um, action was, um, you know, Nigeria needed to have acted um, long before now to stop uh, this issue that has been tested. And then uh, you, you, you saw the, the uh, list of what, um, what they consider to be hostility of uh, we are in on um, uh, xenophobia or, you know, this shouldn't be between um, very brotherly countries, and Ghana, sincere, historical and um, uh, cultural affinity. In fact, uh, they, are, they are leaders, they are uh, founding fathers like Nkuma and um, uh, Adikiwe, former president of Nigeria. They should be turning in their grave to see what, um, what is happening. Um, uh, for instance, um, Dr. Adikiwe started his uh, journalism in Ghana before he came to Nigeria in uh, free uh, uh, independence. And Nigeria and Ghana have uh, gone a long way to be talking about what they are doing now. By the way, the two countries put together have more than 200 and, um, about 240 million of the 300 and, um, and so million people in uh, ECOWAS. So they have about more than 62 percent. And so it's not, um, it's, 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 it's right now, it's working together in Africa. It is integration. It is not individualism. It is not um, anybody trying to go into uh, alone. And by the way, this uh, issue, this um, trade um, uh, code, um, you know, investment um, code that is that issue. Um, when they, if you look, you look at it properly, I think it has um, uh, uh, some contradiction with what it has done. It's free movement, um, uh, right of goods and people, uh, right uh, for establishment and um, a residence of uh, ministry, citizens. We cannot be talking, behaving as if we are in the colonial era. We are, uh, you know, and what, what, what is that for us? for us of people. That is the new feature of 2020. And when you have that, and not now be considering a uh, citizen of ECOWAS as, uh, uh, you know, somebody from a third, third, uh, 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 you know, third country. Because look at it, the irony is that some countries are allowing Asians, like um, Chinese and the uh, Lebanese, uh, who come to say they are doing their business in Africa. They are getting more preferences than Africans. What do you call retail trade? Retail trade selling um, retail card, uh, selling food. But you have uh, Chinese and other places that are selling uh, toothpicks. What is toothpicks? How do you to consider toothpicks? They will come and tell you that they are doing investment, they are investors. And so I think Nigeria and Ghana should go past this type of, um, um, uh, uh, you know, primordial uh, uh, relations. Right. International relations, by the way, is... Uh, uh, it's not uncommon to find, uh, you know, some um, uh, issues also between right. well, uh, hold countries. Mr. Ejime, I, I want you to kindly hold uh, on, sir. Uh, so, it is about conflict management. 
crisis management. That is, that is what life is all about. All right, and Mr. So Mr. Ijeme, I, I also want you to speak and on... And Ghana, as I think, has been played, and uh, it's time to call everybody to order, uh, both uh, bilaterally and then to the network. I also want you to speak on why you feel it has taken the, the Nigerian government this long to speak out. If you've, you know, basically said it's, it's a problem that has existed for a while, why do you think it has taken the federal government this long? Well, I think um, some, some people will say that enough, enough is enough. I mean, if you can really take it, uh, look at 200 million people and then 30 or 31 million people. In terms of uh, what, what can, there shouldn't be a big fight. The fact that there should be no, no cause to need for it. Even in the, when the Ecomog was formed in the in 1990s, it was a Ghanaian that had it. Nigeria had more troops. Uh, bueno, uh, when they went to Nigeria, to the Alun and Ghana. So there has been that uh, commonality, there has been that collaboration and cooperation. But that hasn't happened under the people. Uh, 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 um, and uh, 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 regime, and nobody knows why. I think that should be interrogated. Nigeria and uh, Ghana should work together. Their leadership, by the way, beyond the, the executive, they have a, a, a parliament. And Nigerian, uh, is the, is the Ghanaian parliament part of what is happening? I think they should call themselves to order. I think what they are asking at times is fight the issue of the Nigeria project of the year ago. But that is not how to, uh, that is not how to go with the project. You can also close your own border. If I close my border, you close. But Nigeria has not fought with you. Perhaps if that reason is not satisfactory enough, you can escalate it and talk, communicate, discuss, dialogue. Because what is happening now, if for that is not going to stop. But they All say right. that um, an eye to an eye, everybody will go blind. And I don't think Nigerians and uh, Ghana, Nigerians and Ghanaians want to do that, that part. All the right. leader ba is not allowed to uh, to, to the point that uh, ordinary citizens now begin to um, uh, seek uh, help, self-help. It has to be resolved diplomatically. It has to be resolved in a way that uh, these are two brotherly countries that uh, together form the largest uh, percentage of the population in, in ECOWAS. In, in so what they are supposed to show leadership, Nigeria and Ghana. All right, I, I want to go back to I want to go back to Mr. Kwame Dantua. Um, hold on, Mr. Ajime. I want to go back to Mr. Kwame. Kwame, you already spoke about you know this, but I want you to expand it a little further. Uh, Ghana has got its own sovereignty. Yes, we agree. Ghana can also decide. Sorry, can, you, can you speak? I can't. There's an echo. If you can speak slowly, please. Okay. So what I'm asking about is, um, Ghana has got its own sovereignty. We agree with that. Ghana can also decide to review its laws. But the Nigerian minister says that this is targeted at Nigerians specifically in Ghana. Yeah. Go on, please. Hello? Yes, go I, ahead. I didn't hear the last bit. The Nigerian minister said... Says that this is targeted at Nigerians, specifically in Ghana. It, it's not so. It's not so. Look, there are quite a number of Nigerians working in Ghana, quite a lot of them. They are not targeted. It is those who are not abiding by the law. Some, some of them, their documents aren't even right. When the question of the residency permit came up, government has streamlined it. And that 90-day uh, stipulation has been deleted. And you see, it's not a question of what is good for the goose is good for the gander. No. Look, when Nigeria closed its borders, it cost Ghana a huge amount of money. Right up to the president of Ghana coming to see the Nigerian president to give some kind of way for Ghanaian goods to come in, that wasn't done. But nobody is making a hero out of it in Ghana. Because of the special relationship we tend to have with Nigeria. And for instance, in the notice that you sent me, 
you indicated the Nigerian embassy are being attacked and all that. That wasn't government. And in the end, when government went into it and, you know, got the nitty gritty, it turned out that the Nigerian uh, authorities had not uh, uh, done the papers or the entitlement for the land. And it opens up all sorts of uh, things. So it, it, that, thing, that picture shouldn't be painted as if Nigerian uh, government is targeting Nigerians. No. Because, you know, a, a lot of Nigerians are married to Ghanaians and vice versa. I myself am married to a Nigerian. So the picture that is being painted is not the same picture that, you know, is being seen here. There has to be a point of understanding. Yes, ECOWAS is there. Unfortunately, both countries haven't uh, uh, adhered to the ECOWAS protocols. The AU is there. We haven't adhered to the AU protocols with regards to how we played in Africa. And we hope that with the AFCTA now coming in, all these things will be regularized. And I know that government is seriously looking at the GIPC laws as we speak. And so the picture that is being painted, I don't think is a positive picture on the Nigerian side. But I think the way forward is for us to be able to interact the way we are interacting and also get government, the two governments to sit, you know, across the table and see how best we can sort this out. All right. And uh, Mr. Paul, Jimmy, I want to go back to you. I, I want to know if you feel in any way that this, you know, might, you know, somehow be blown out of proportion. Um, what do you think also might be responsible um, for the animosity between the two countries? Because it has gotten to a stage where there, you know, of course, the Nigerian government has issued out a statement. But you know, before that, do you think that this might be blown out of proportion? You see, that, that possibility, I don't think it's going to be, you know, that is a bad commentary uh, and bad uh, example of leadership by both countries. And it shouldn't be allowed to continue. Uh, in fact, it shouldn't be allowed to uh, escalate or uh, go beyond what they can control. They should talk. But my uh, brother family was talking about uh, law, national law. Yes. Apartheid, uh, segregation, was done, in, you know, in, in national, uh, state law in South Africa. That didn't make it right. There are some laws that are anti-people or anti-integration. Anti Those laws have to be there, Nobody is questioning the sovereignty, the sovereignty of any nation. But there is also what you call superior nationality. And when you sign into certain things, you, are, uh, you surrender some of that your sovereignty to belong to a bigger club that drug brings you small benefits. There are so many Nigerian students in Ghana. And Ghana, there are factories there. So you think, where, where do they focus their, their, their Where do they have market? Ghana is 31 million. Nigeria is 20, 20, uh, 200 million. They produce there and target Nigerian market. So four countries beat, beat each other. And so it's not a case of uh, law or sovereignty. That has been taken care of by you, the two of them agreeing to, to uh, the signatory to some protocols by ECOWAS. The EU, um, the um, um, American uh, 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 Association, everywhere in Asia, they all have a group. And then what it does is that you gain more by working together, not isolationism, not uh, protecting your own because. No country is an island. So they can stop this issue of uh, 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 sovereignty. You have to obey law and you don't obey law. Let them go to the echo. Echo wants to go there now. If I, there is any, you know, I take any, any country to take any action that hurt uh, uh, the other country. There are, you know, um, institutions, there are avenues they can seek. Communication bilaterally. If they are not able to resolve it, then they come to the ECOWAS. There is the ECOWAS parliament, there is the ECOWAS court. So why are they behaving as like uh, little children, little fighting over and all the They should behave like uh, countries that are grown, particularly Ghana. I think what is happening, you don't come violate the, 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 the embassy of a of brotherly concern and then you offer apology. That is not how it is done. If what if there is retaliation? 
the countries will suffer. I'm going to move to um, Mr. Kwame now, if you can hear, uh, if you can hear me. It, uh, uh, so that we can go back to the, uh, the friendly relations that we need to have. All right. Um, I think that's all the time that we have um, on this conversation. We're totally out of time. We apologize for that. Um, but thank you very much to Mr. Kwame Jantua, the Chairman, Political Affairs Committee, and, um, of course, Paul Ejimea, Nigerian International Affairs expert, for speaking with us.